Good afternoon. I'm uh, Robert Morgan. I am the facilitator uh, to uh, introduce uh, Hermann Nietzsche, who is beside me. Uh, we're going to engage in a public dialogue together, and I will be making some remarks about him and his work, and uh, he will uh, graciously uh, answer some of the questions that I want to put forth. Uh, I want to thank the organizers of this event. Uh, it was a certain amount of work that I'm sure you can understand. And uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the poet, the uh, physician, uh, the gallerist, the curator, uh, Dr. Mark Strauss, and his charming, magnificent, uh, lifelong uh, wife. Uh, Livia Strauss, Dr. Livia Strauss, for uh, 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 doing this incredible uh, event, and but also taking care of uh, the career of uh, Mr. Nitsch in uh, New York, in the United States. Uh, I have to say that uh, Hermann Nietzsche is extremely uh, well received throughout Europe has been for many, many decades. And uh, this is very gratifying to know because he has worked very hard over the years to sustain his activity and to produce some of the most important work uh, in the area of expressive content that uh, we have seen in certainly recent years. Um, Hermann works with a total art idea. He is not limited to one uh, medium, uh, one area of uh, materiality or concept, but he puts it all together. Uh, music is very much a part of these happenings, which are action performances. And what you were seeing in the film that we just saw in this 12 minute film was uh, a happening in Schloss Prinzendorf, where he has lived uh, since 1973. And he's had many such events on his property over the years, uh, more than 150 at this point. Uh, and this is quite substantial. Uh, I have to say that uh, there is a group that uh, Mr. Nitsch was associated with in his early years. Of course, he's gone beyond that now. But uh, I just want to mention some of the uh, people that he was uh, connected with uh, that were his colleagues and compatriots. Uh, the group was called Viennese Actionism. And uh, Nietzsche was pretty much the founding member of that. Uh, the oldest was Otto Mule, who died in 2013 at the age of 87. The youngest was Rudolf Schwarzkogler, who died in 1969 uh, at the age of uh, 29. And uh, still with us are Gunter Bruce and Hermann Nietzsche, who is indeed the most influential figure of that group. But I think it's important to understand that uh, at the beginning, there was this activity going on in Austria, which was uh, indirectly connected with the happenings of Alan Capro and Klaus Oldenburg and Jim Dine, Robert Whitman and others that was going on in New York. I think that's important. And in Japan, of course, there was the Gutai group and various activities throughout Europe in which uh, artists were moving away from the single medium into multi-mediums, okay? And working in a way that was performative and sometimes from a quite uh, extraordinary, sometimes eccentric point of view. Uh, but always interesting, always vital, always something that was putting forth a series of ideas that would open up the art world of the late 20th century into the 21st century. It's very interesting, I was reading through the resume of Herman recently. Uh, he is the uh, in addition to the group that he was connected with, the most important invention of his was the Orgies Mysteries, Mysteries Theater. And this was first performed uh, at a very young age in 1960 
at the Museum of Technology in Vienna. And uh, this was the first time that the idea of putting these forms together, these materials together, these organic substances, uh, blood and animal parts and human beings all connected, this would become a major breakthrough in terms of European art. Okay, uh, I'd like to begin with a, uh, a couple questions and uh, then we will move on from there. Uh, Herman was not originally a painter. He was coming out of literature and writing. And uh, yesterday during a, a brief meeting that we had, I said, uh, Herman, what kind of writing were you doing back in 1957? I would be curious to know. And he deferred and said, I will talk about this tomorrow. So Herman, now is the time. I think this is some of the special wine from uh, Prinzendorf that he brought with him. The tradition of art was very important for me. And I was interested in all kinds of art. I was interested in painting. I was interested in uh, poetry. Uh, I was interested in theater. And I got a very big influence from the Greek tragedy, the, the intensity of the Greek tragedy uh, I liked very, very much and influenced me very, very much. And uh, I was missing in the theater after the Greek theater uh, this very deep intention and I try to do, try to do it uh, in my work, and I started as a normal drama writer, and there exists a big book. Uh, it's calling the World Poesy, and there I started uh, my Orchis Mystery Theater. And I wanted to make a theater where I need six days. And then also the influence of Wagner was very, very important for me. And his idea of the Gesamtkunstwerk, I tried to to bring it, uh, yeah, to, uh, to realize it more as uh, Wagner did it. And also was for me very important, Skriabin. He tried to connect his music with smells and colors. And I did not hear, when I was very young, about Kepro, uh, about uh, the Kurdai group. But I started uh, to make a theater 
with these real events. And uh, then I, I call it actions. And when I did real events, uh, the Gesamtkunstwerk, yeah, it was automatically there because um, in the reality, uh, when you uh, when you are here and when you uh, try to realize your life, you need all your fam uh, five senses. You you need uh, sm uh, to smell, to taste. Uh, to look uh, and to uh, to hear and to touch and then uh, I I come to a situation where it not was possible for me to work with words. Uh, 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 my but I wrote for the theater, was full with uh, using our senses. It, um, uh, what I was writing was uh, uh, full of, uh, of smells, uh, of, uh, yeah, of, of everything. But, uh, I could feel with my senses. And so I was not anymore able to write with words. And uh, for me, it becomes important uh, to use yeah, real happenings. <clears throat> and that was the uh, situation of my beginning. Yeah, okay. Uh, Herman, as I understand, you did your first painting in uh, 1960, and uh, you did your first painting with blood in 1962. Do I have that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, this uh, continued, by the way, the mixing of pigment with blood into the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, now, we spoke a bit about this yesterday, Herman, if you recall. Do you think your paintings are representational, or do you prefer to see them more as a catharsis or an exorcism from repression? The painting you can see in the uh, exhibition, uh, I call it action painting. That's the first step of my theater. The painter who is working with blood and with colors, uh, he used when he paints. Uh, all his senses, uh, his senses, and he tried to use it very intensive. And the next uh, next step uh, is uh, uh, that the painter goes away from the canvas, and then the extra extras uh, of my theater. They use blood, meat, uh, intestines, uh, uh, and then starts my theater. Um, what you see, uh, what you see here, the roots of them, what you see, are in my paintings. 
Okay. Um, uh, often you have spoken about the uh, paradigm of Nietzsche, which is the Apollonian and the Dionysian, and I understand that uh, there are two points of view, one of which are you elevating the Dionysian in your painting, or are you looking for some kind of coexistence with the Apollonian? In other words, do you want to have both, or do you want to simply go all the way with Dionysius? I want to say I need both. The uh, Dionysian way of life uh, is only possible if there's the consciousness, and the consciousness is uh, uh, connected uh, with Apollon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the uh, obviously uh, Freud was uh, Sigmund Freud was Austrian. And uh, he developed uh, psychoanalysis, as we know. And I'm wondering um, if uh, this notion of uh, liberating the self from repression is something that is key in your work. When you look around and when you look at the history uh, there you see the nature gives us much more power and much more energies energies as is uh, as we are able to use them because the government, uh, uh, the religion, and uh, I would say also the whole society uh, don't allow that we live intensive. And uh, because of that, we have to depressions in us. There are many energies it is not allowed to coming out. And my theater and also my painting has something to do with psychoanalysis. It is a psychoanalysis without words, with material. And in my Orgis Mystery uh, Theater, they are coming out all the depressed energies and art brings them in the consciousness. And that's uh, very, very important for my whole theater. I try that, that people yeah, uh, that the yeah. Anyway, that there is uh, uh, catharsis. Catharsis, catharsis. Yes, yes. Um, and when you think at Aristoteles, uh, he spoke about the Greek uh, tragedy. He also spoke always about catharsis. Uh, do you feel that uh, the spiritual has been left behind in modern times and that uh, we need to retrieve it, I think you already answered part of this, in relation to nature, in relation to materials that, as I said earlier, were fully organic. Uh, you're looking for an experience, not just a text. Is that what I understand? The experience is very, very important, but it's necessary 
to use uh, the text that uh, this experience coming out as an indirect system. The old poets, they need poetry and they need words uh, uh, and actors playing their roles. Uh, in my work, it's different. I need words to say to the people which working in my theater, which kind of experience uh, yeah, they shall, yeah, uh, how shall I explain it? Uh, I, I was thinking that uh, perhaps... When I, um, when I say to my actors, please smash the fruits. Uh, the boards uh, gives the position what they shall do. You can read in my score what now is going on. Okay, very interesting. Uh, yesterday, uh, Herman, we talked briefly about Gnosticism, uh, the uh, Christian rebels from the second and third century, and they said something very similar to what you just said, that they were looking for a spiritual purpose in accord with nature, to rediscover their origins through participation in frenzied rituals. Was this something that you knew about when you were beginning the Orgies Mysteries Theater? In the background of my theater, there is a philosophy. And uh, I call it philosophy of being. And I also speak uh, of mystic of being. In the, in the tradition, uh, um, mystic was also, was uh, connected with uh, uh, saying no to life and to look only in the transcendence. I see it different. I see yes to life, and this yes to life is for me mystic of being, because for me there is no border between, between immanence and, and transcendence. Uh, I would say my work has very much to do with mystic, but that is mystic of being. Okay, very good. Um, uh, yesterday, the name uh, Meister Eckhart came up, who was a medieval mystic, and uh, uh, we spoke about the, uh, uh, the fact that to be a rebel was in many ways to be a mystic, that you were always going to be controversial when you present an idea that is outside of the status quo of what people normally are thinking. We know from the history that mystic always is a, a attack against the traditional religious feeling. And so there was always a war between the real mystic, uh, uh, the real mystica and uh, the Pope and 
all the religion, the police. Clearly, throughout your career thus far, you have encountered resistance and people who are offended or uh, upset by your work. And uh, in many cases, they've taken the issue of the slaughtering of the animals and uh, said that this is something that artists should not be doing. Uh, what is your response to these people? Uh, I never slaughtered animals. All the, uh, the to 95% for my performances, I buy the meat, the blood, uh, and the carcasses uh, from animals. Only in Brinsendorf and also in America, I included in my performances uh, that people could see a slaughtering of an animal and the animal would be slaughtered anyway. And uh, I wanted to show the problem of that in a very, very deep, realistic way. But the animals are not killed because of me. And everybody who knows me, I, I like animals very, very much. My wife and I, we have many, many anim animals in our house. And I think I'm a real animal protector. I'm never against animals. It's a, mis uh, a misunderstanding. And when you see killing animal, that when you saw the killing of animals, it is important that you feel with animals. And I always say, uh, uh, when there's a killing of animal, it's like, like in the, our religion. It's the dead on the cross. And, but then I believe there is always a resurrection. And I want to show with my work everything. I want, I want to show uh, uh, love, uh, ecstasy, uh, joy, and mystic experience, uh, and pain. It is necessary in theater to show pain. And I would say, when you look at the history of theater, there's always the problem of that. And uh, a drama writer, and I'm a drama writer, must look at the dead and must look at the catastrophe uh, from the drama. And anyway, I want to show in my work everything. Dead, birth, and resurrection. And also, uh, uh, my seat is also a little bit like, like a mess. And also, I develop ritual and uh, you asked me yesterday uh, what is uh, there are six days what is with Sunday I would say the sixth day is you are the, the audience is uh, connected with being and uh, with the intensive form of life. 
And then the play is over. Then there's Sunday, the day of resurrection. And the people shall show what they learned uh, during these six days. So the kind of experience that you're dealing with in terms of the animal parts, the blood, and the other foods that are being placed on the body and being poured into the mouth, that all of these will eventually lead to a kind of resurrection, or shall we say, a rebirth. Is that what you mean? I would say everything comes again. There, just now, uh, there are people dying. Uh, there is the birth of young people. And you see, it's like winter, spring, summer, and autumn. Everything comes again. And that I want to show with my, with my play, with my theater. And you didn't ask me, maybe you will ask me uh, uh, which kind of religion uh, I like. I would, I would answer, I'm interested in all kind of religions. Many religions have a deep and a good message, but I don't uh, believe only at one religion. I believe in being in eternity. I believe in nature. I believe in the cosmos. I believe in the, in the millions of milk woods. I, I believe in sun systems. Uh, and I believe in being in eternity. And well, perhaps uh, Herman, you'd be willing to speak about the. You, you have mentioned uh, ecstasy in your work, in one of the uh, in one of the experiences that you're interested in. Uh, having happening, um, but what about the sexual aspect of some of these works, which to me is fairly evident. Uh, I've always thought that, you know, maybe you were trying to define eros in a way that is outside of bourgeoisie values, for example, that you're not looking at sexual uh, conditions of life from that normative bourgeois point of view, but you're trying to get to the essence of some kind of erotic feeling through your performances. Is that true? I would say that is true. And I, I learned a lot from, from Nietzsche. Uh, I learned a lot from Nietzsche. I learned a lot uh, from Freud. I learned a lot from C.G. Jung. And uh, uh, I'm very interested in erotic. I also speak from in, in connection with my work from pan-erotic and pan-sexualism. Uh, but anyway, I'm not fixed only in sexuality. A, uh, I will not speak about other 
friends, they went the other way. But for me, all is important. And not uh, uh, to be fixed only in erotic. And again, I speak in connection with my work from about the pan erotic. When you see that we work with in dance, uh, uh, in this dance, uh, with, with meat and with blood. That's all it has to do with erotic. Good. Uh, Wittgenstein, who you have mentioned, was also Austrian before he left. Uh, there's, I think, a significant quote from Wittgenstein that relates to your work. And that is, and I quote, the human body is the best picture of the human soul. Uh, from Wittgenstein, I like very, very much uh, uh, when he said, not how the world is, uh, uh, is uh, the mystic thing is important. The mystic thing is that the world is. And in that I believe. What about, uh, you have not mentioned uh, Carl Gustav Jung in terms of the collective unconscious. As I'm looking at some of these action performances, I cannot help but think of this kind of revealing of signs and symbols coming from the unconscious. I'm not so interested in symbols. I'm much more interested that I build up my work and there some connection to symbols. But I never say that is that. When I use a, a dead lamb and I uh, give it on the cross, that's not Jesus Christ. The people believe that it is Jesus Christ. For me, a symbol is a secret and that's a very important part of my work, that I work with secrets and that I not explain symbols. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, Freud often talked about retention and expulsion uh, in relation to the issue of the ego. Uh, it seems to me that uh, in our current global environment, and certainly coming out of this country, there's a great deal of monetary retention, and there is very little dealing with the spiritual expulsion that might be more important. Uh, does your work, do you think your work, is addressing the necessity to re revive the spiritual uh, in order to find a new balance in relation to the retentive, as Freud refers to it? You know, I'm very interested in using our senses. And that is very important what I know that, uh, uh, now say. That the consciousness and using our senses, uh, that they are not against it. Uh, because when you use your senses, you feel it with your consciousness. So the senses and consciousness are no contrary. Could we say that through the senses, we are, or you are trying to produce a situation of higher sensory cognition? 
the arms here. Okay. Uh, because we can learn through the senses, which I think is one of your yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. You know that uh, perhaps we have diminished the necessity of learning yeah, through yeah. the senses, and we need to reawaken that. Um, we're and, nearly at, and uh, very important. Our senses are necessary to building up our consciousness. The senses, uh, I would say. They show us how to become consciousness of being. Conscious of our being. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, is this consciousness of being something that we share? I think yes. Yes. And I think this is where the notion of theater becomes very important. Because theater, as I understand it, as I understand your work, is very much of a shared experience, a give and take experience. Am I correct? I would say every great theater brings experience. Okay, good. Um, we're nearly at the uh, end of our time and I, I promised uh, uh, Rita, uh, Herman's charming wife, that we would have some time for questions and uh, Perhaps, uh, do we have a microphone over there? Okay. Uh, we can, is that okay for you, Herman? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we will uh, open the audience to uh, questions that you might have relative to some of our, uh, Mr. Nietzsche's remarks. I, th I think you stunned them, you know, in, in some of your uh, amazing remarks that you've made on this platform this afternoon. Uh, Herman, I mean, this, this has been, I, I have to say, a great experience, and I want to thank you for wanting me to do this with you, uh, because it's always a learning experience, and I always feel elevated when I'm with you and when I'm hearing your words. Uh, there's probably things that we have left out. Yes, please. Uh, hello, thank you. Uh, I also, when when Robert and you were talking, I, I it also reminded me of uh, Rambo. I don't know if this is also another of your influences, Rambo and the chaos of the senses and. Jean Otto Rambo. Huh? Jean Otto Rambo. Rambo. Yeah. I like him very, very much, and I got a great influence from him, and I would say. Uh, you must feel it when you see my Orchid's Mystery. There, you can see the poetry from Rambo. Ah. Correct. Thank you. Uh, something that I promised Herman that I would mention, and this is important, uh, what we're looking at here is uh, a performance that was done in 1998. And it's called Six Days, because during the six days, we experience the kinds of animal parts and so forth uh, with our bodies. We move into a higher consciousness. And then the seventh day, of course, is the resurrection, as Mitch, Mr. Nietzsche explained. Uh, he wants to do a new version of this. It will be a completely new event in 2020. He is currently working on this. Now, there's a lot of work that goes into these events, even though there's a lot of spontaneity, which is important. But to organize them, as I was asking him about the text or the experience, both are important. And I think this is something we can all look forward to in 2020 to this experience. And by the way, the multi-sensoryism is something that you cannot get easily through a film. But Herman is very much of a musician who composes his own m music. And uh, Mark Strauss invited him to do an organ recital, I think three or four months ago, is that correct? Uh, which I think was the first time he had done that in the United States, is that correct? Uh, the first time you had played the organ in the United States? And uh, uh, was at uh, uh, Mark Strauss's gallery. 
I'm always at every place doing something new in the United States and also in his gallery. Okay, <laughs> very good. All right, well, anyway, the music will be very much a part of it. Yes? Uh, wait a moment. Well, we need uh, a, a... Um, he said something very, very important. I want to invite all of you. Uh, uh, 1920, I try to make uh, the best six-day six play I ever did in Prinzendorf. And Prinzendorf is close to Vienna in a wonderful landscape full of vineyards. Uh, and there is my theater, my orchard theater. And there I, uh, <coughs> I tried to realize, let's say, my last work. And also the music will be very, very important for this piece. Anyway, I try to invite you all to this yeah, monumental theater play. Hello, thank yeah, you for the talk. You. I would like to ask you about, I, I read that you were arrested for two weeks because of your activities and I would like to ask you if you have any, had any other problems with authorities or somebody else when you organized all these actions because it, were, it is very massive and uh, it happens in a, in a, on a big surface. So uh, how did you manage to, to do it and how did you get the permission for that? Legal I have to, excuse me, I have to tell you, I was the first time, time three, di three times in prison, then, uh, uh, three days, excuse me, and then uh, uh, 14 days, and then one week, and then I left Austria, I went to Germany to America, anyway. And well, you see this, it is a fight. I have to fight to do my things. And I will fight till at the end of my life because I'm the meaning, my work shows the trueness concentrated. Great. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I want to thank you all for coming and participating in this uh, remarkable event, at least I thought it was. Uh, Herman, thank you very much. I have to say that uh, I tried to keep it as slow as possible because I do not speak German, and I think uh, Herman did a great job in English, and uh, I congratulate him on that as well as the content of his magnificent thoughts. Uh, and thank you again. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I have to say to you, thank you. And you feel my work very, very deep. And it's not our first show we had together. And I hope we will in future work very often together. Thank you very, very much. Mm.